Here we are again at the 54th Annual Meeting of the Council of Science Editors in Baltimore, Maryland, and I'm talking with Bruce Danzig, uh, Editor-in-Chief of the NRC Research Press uh, in Canada, and we have done a, a series of uh, small vignettes talking about different aspects of choosing a journal and, and uh, how submissions uh, should be prepared in order to be well-received at journals, uh, what editors expect, and things of this nature. And in this segment, I'd really like to get into the nitty-gritty of what the author should be doing and with respect to things that you had mentioned prior about title and, and structure of the paper, uh, the flow of logic in the paper, things of that nature. Um, admittedly, in many different languages, the language structure is such that the language flow it, it flows differently. In, Engli right. in English language and in scientific um, language, usually it is a building up effect of coming to a conclusion, whereas in other languages there is a lot of description up front as to the conclusions and then you get into the uh, natural um, uh, deconstruction of those arguments. Right. Uh, and so uh, I, without leading you further down that path, um, I'd like to hear what your observations are and what your suggestions are for authors, uh, particularly authors in uh, non-English speaking authors who are looking to submit to English language Western journals, what they should really be paying attention to and what are the sort of the tricks that they should do to with their paper to gain recognition, first time recognition and the first time that the editor picks up the paper that this is something potentially of value. It, I mentioned before, Dan, a title is really important. We often don't spend enough time with it. Um, not only telling what the, what the uh, manuscript is about, but often going a little beyond that, uh, or maybe much beyond that, and talking about the significance of it. And I'm trying to think of a good example of a title I can't offhand, but we might, while, uh, while we're uh, chatting about this, um, some papers that just catch your eye because of that title. And it's often a, a, a bit of a, not a trick that's maybe too, too uh, uh, strong. Do, do you have an opinion here? And it's something that I, I find creeping up sure. only in the, in, in the media, but also in papers, as to whether the title is a narrative that describes the results, or is the title a question that points to the results, or is the title just a plain narrative of what the content of the paper is, or something else? Do you have an opinion of that? Traditionally, of course, in, in scientific journals, the, the last one of yours was the one that... Uh, most journals we're looking for. But today I'm finding, again, because of the, the flow of manuscripts, we're trying to find things that are exciting for our journal, things that catch readers' eyes, too, and, and, and that have interest to readers. And so often a, a, that catchy title, the one that asks a question, the one that um, looks at some bigger issue in, in, in science, in evolution, in whatever, is going to attract uh, the, the attention of the uh, Editor. Then the, the one that often we often overlook, the abstract. Abstracts are often written late, with very little time spent doing it, and we're foolish to do that because sometimes that's the only thing that a reader will read. The one thing, and so if you want to attract attention to your work for the reader, this is a key a key piece of the uh, of the puzzle. We'll even bother looking at your paper, uh, finding out exactly what you did if they didn't, if they weren't attracted to what you said in the abstracts, so work on the abstracts carefully. And then that old, um, is it IMRAD? Introduction, Materials and Methods, Results, and Discussion outline is still generally used in most uh, scientific journals. Not all, not all mm -hmm. uh, but most of them. And readers and, and editors are expecting to see things in that kind of a flow. And they're also expecting in an abstract that they're going to get a hint of uh, or, or, or a quick summary of those kinds of things. What's the study about? Is it about, if it's about a species, where were the collections made? Are these all over the world or are they in just one area? Um, are we talking about a small sample or are we talking about a big sample? Whatever. Those kinds of questions. Many times an author is, is caught, you know, how do I put all the results of the paper in 250 words of the abstract. And so what are your thoughts about how comprehensive the abstract actually has to be about the actual results of the paper? And what in many, there's, a, there's many types of forms of abstracts. There's a structured abstract and there's a narrative abstract. Right. Uh, and, and different journals have different styles and, and requests right. in this regard. Uh, but as per the actual content of the abstract, how totally inclusive 
of the results of the paper do you feel it needs to be? What is the role of the abstract in the paper? Yeah, again, the ab my view is that the abstract is to attract the attention, tell you roughly what the paper is about. Just by the, the word itself, abstract, by the size of it, you can't comprehensively include everything in most papers. Once in a while, you can that everything summarizes into a major point and you can make it in the abstract and that's it. And then everybody wants to read about all the details about it. But usually we have to pick out some of the, the, the one or two key findings and things that we want to focus on in the abstract. And while there are lots of other interesting, um, uh, lots of other interesting data, lots of other interesting points that one's making, there's some central focus that we really want to uh, impress upon the reader, uh, the editor, and catch their attention.